Um, hi, my name is Ravi Karani and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Sutro. We're developing a connected device that remotely measures water chemistry to tell you if your water is safe or not. How many of you remember the Rio Olympics? It's no you know, big story that the pool on the right is not safe to jump in or is not really good. Even professionals get this wrong. Water safety is difficult, and around $400 billion combined are spent in the US alone just on water. And water quality is a necessity for a lot of things. I mean, you know, you can look at the swimming pool, you can look at precision agriculture or aquaculture, um, and also municipalities and wastewater management. Water today has been analog, and Sutro makes it digital. The way that, you know, the big problem right now is that water testing is currently, it's infrequent and manual. It's limited in its scope because you're usually manually testing the actual water. And it's expensive because you have to actually get somebody out there to do it. We solve this by having a device that continuously monitors the water. It's big data because we can aggregate all of these, all these devices together. And it's affordable because you don't have to actually have somebody go out there and test it for you. Water quality is painful because of two reasons. The first reason is diagnosis. You have to go out there and measure it and say, okay, well, my pH is 8.2. Well, now what? Now you actually look at it and you have to figure out the treatment. Well, I need to get to 7.2, and my gallonage is 20,000 gallons, and my alkalinity is X. You can see how this starts to compound itself and gets pretty complicated. The Sutro Tech Stack, what we've actually developed is a proprietary hardware sensor that is able to measure 50 different water parameters. Those are taken up into the cloud. We can then measure actually what's happening with your water. We then set that to an actual insight layer that then tells you what or what not to do with your water. We've done this in swimming pools right now. We're looking to actually get into agriculture, wastewater, and municipalities after this. So the really cool thing is putting this in the swimming pools, we can begin to actually get visibility in what's happening into the you know, reservoir. And the cool thing that I like to call is we begin to build this thing called the water genome. So just as you have the human genome, we can begin to take inputs and actually understand what's happening with the water chemistry and predict its outputs. So the way that this works is you take this device, you drop it into your swimming pool, connect it up to Wi-Fi, and then you look on your iPhone and it tells you, hey look, you need to add in two pounds of chemicals, some chlorine, some acid. If you don't have it, hey, we'll actually deliver it to your household with Amazon Prime. Around 12% of the US households have swimming pools or spas, and around 85% of these people actually manage themselves, with the combined $15 billion that are spent every year on just chemicals. We charge $300 for that device, and we make about $800 per year on the chemicals. And we've gone through Bolt and Autodesk, as well as Amazon actually invested in our last round. We have about 500 users that are actively deployed across the US with around 1 million data points around water. And we have about 10,000 devices that are, that are prone to go out in 2018 with a $5 million contract moving into the ag tech space. The team, I'm a two-time entrepreneur. I'm also from the pool industry and I've invested in water. My co-founder has been in IoT for the last 15 years. His last company was acquired by Ericsson. He's been building large-scale mesh connected systems for the last 15 years. We also have team members from Orange, Silicon Valley, Apple, Xerox Park, and Ericsson. Thank you. I'm more than happy to answer any questions. Hey, Robbie, I have yeah. uh, two, two questions. So, uh, one, can you tell us what's under uh, patent in your tech stack? And then the other question has to do with your product roadmap. You're going from consumer direct to pool, what have you. Does the business model change as you move into other verticals? Yeah, so to your first question, um, or what is proprietary? We have three provisional patents on the actual um, sensor cluster. We have two utility and one um, design. On the software, we are, that is patented as well. We do uh, have machine learning algorithms on that as well. Um, from the business model standpoint, we are looking at B2C right now because it's easier, it's really easy to implement to the people that have pools because they need chemicals and this is a problem for them. Uh, we are actually negotiating with a large uh, distributor in the pool industry to take this actually to B2B model in the pool industry. With that data, we're looking at actually moving into more of a SaaS model for the kind of like agriculture, fisheries, aquaculture arenas. Right, when you think about the water, wastewater, municipal concept, I typically think of water in motion. Mm -hmm. Is it able to, is the concept that it will eventually be able to measure water in motion, or is it always the standing water pools that we're looking at? So we, we are building a unit right now that will actually go in line. So this one's the floating for the swimming pool, so you can easily install it for your consumer base. But you'll have something you can actually tap into your into your pipeline. How many of the uh, devices have you sold to date, and uh, how many? I guess I'm curious about the uh, the assumption of the, the eight hundred dollar per year chemicals number in terms of how many uh, like how many hundred points you have on customers that are spending that. Yeah, we've done about a quarter million in pre-sales on our website. Uh, we've deployed 500 devices, as I've said. Um, over the past two years have been what the data points are around that actual $800. 
and frankly, from actually running cool stores as well as cool routes myself, I just I know that's how much people actually spend on this stuff because that's how much I spend on it. Are there any liability risks with the commercial pools or consumers' pools if the mix of chemicals is not correct? Um, yes, there is. If you um, if you end up dosing it in the wrong direction and you, and you have that issue, we do have stop gaps in the actual technology to, to tell us that something is going wrong. And we'll tell the user, like, hey, you need to go out there and actually measure your pool yourself. Feed us the data because we think something's wrong. Um, until we get some sort of stability on our actual device, um, just as the Google car has to drive X million hours or X million miles, we'll have to do a very similar thing to actually understand that's what is or what not wrong with your water. Hey, Robbie, great presentation. Thank you. How, uh, how evenly distributed are our particles, chemicals in, in a water stream? For a pool, for example, it's a relatively small quantity of water, but when you get to a reservoir or an agricultural use, do you need more than one sensor? Yes, you will. Um, the beauty of a pool is that it is a well-mixed substance, and a pump is actually turning over the water once a day. Um, you do start getting some sort of stratification. You start to get plumes in, in you know, rivers, lakes, reservoirs. Um, I think it's going to come back to our machine learning layer, is if, if we have three nodes, and we know one node is seeing a lot of chemistry, a lot of you know issues in one particular part of the reservoir, we'll have to deploy more units in those areas to actually get and understand what's happening there in a more granular basis. Perfect. Robbie, thanks a million. Round of applause for